Hello everyone, Namaste. My name is Sabah Heather and I will be your yoga guide today. We've been talking about the hips, creating sequences on how we can take care of the hips and make sure that we don't have any aches or pains or discomfort in the lower back and the hips. We've been sitting a lot these days. Uh, we don't have much to do uh, outside of our homes as we stay uh, locked down or maybe stay at home, you're quarantining yourself. And so it requires more from us to, to be able to take care of ourselves. So today's practice is the third part of yoga for hips. And we will continue our practice to more postures to help ease the lower back and the hips. Today, we will work on three postures, pigeon, and then the sleeping pigeon. And then we will also do um, a child's pose, a few variations of child's pose to help the hips and the back. As we get started, please know that you are in charge and it is your practice. Uh, if anything doesn't feel good, please don't do it. Uh, if you have challenges, uh, you know, maybe pinched nerve uh, in, your, uh, in your leg or in your back or herniated discs, then uh, talk to your doctor, find out what works for you. And um, everyone's just so amazing right now. Everyone's just so open to help each other. So just a quick email would be a wonderful idea to talk and find out what works for you. So please do the practice very mindfully, really listening to your body. And then if it feels good, do it. If it doesn't feel good, just sit that one out. All right, when you're ready, get started. Here, we will start in cross-legged position for a few breaths. And again, as I start my class always uh, with, I'm gonna show you a few props. So one, I have a blanket and then I have two blocks with me. These props are amazing in helping me go deeper in the postures and uh, just really make postures accessible to me. So I invite you to grab your blocks and your cushions if you don't have one. Just grab a throw from your living room and a couple of cushions and that should work as well. So let's get started. Find yourself on your mat, close your eyes, ground down through the hips and sit up tall through the spine. Eyes are softly closed. Start to find your breath. Chin slightly pulled in towards the neck, belly towards the spine. Breathing into the chest, inhale the chest puffs up. Exhale, the shoulders and the elbows become heavy, pulling down and away from the ears. Really bring yourself to your mat. As you begin your practice, affirm to yourself, I am here, I am present, I am ready. I am here, I am present, I am ready. I am here, I am present, I am ready. Softly open your eyes, rest your hands on the mat and take your knees all the way back. Coming onto all fours here, hands under the shoulders and knees under the hips. Just pause here, take a few cat cows, inhaling, opening the chest, exhaling, rounding the spine. Inhale, opening the chest. Exhale, rounding the spine. And if you want more warm-ups, if you need to prepare more for part three, please make sure that you go and practice with part one and part two so that you feel prepared for part three. I mean, you can do this independently as well, nothing wrong. It's just that if you feel like your practice is at a, uh, at a level where you need to warm up to Kapodasan, to the pigeon, then you're more than welcome to practice with part A and part, part one and part two, not A and B. And here, inhaling, opening the chest between the arms, exhaling, rounding the spine, breathing it all out. And pause here. Let's try to make circles with the hips here. One clockwise and one anti-clockwise. Just swaying from one side to the other, making big circles with the hips. And then rest the top of the feet onto the mat 
and press the hips back to the heels. Press up, inhale, knees stay on the mat, maybe press the hips down towards the mat a little bit, opening the chest, exhale, pull the belly in towards the spine, hips to the heels. Inhale, open, keep pressing the hips forward, keep opening the chest, and exhale, chin to the chest, belly to the spine, hips to the heels. Just a few more times, inhale, open, Exhale, close. One more time, chest forward, head up this time. And exhale, hips back to the heels. Garbhasan, Balasan, child's pose, whatever you call it, just hold here. And if it's possible, if it feels good, separate the knees away from each other and you start to feel the activation of the thighs and the hips and then bring the chest down. If bringing the chest down is difficult, grab a block, keep the block right where the chest would land and just support your chest with your block. Forehead can stay on the mat, arms can stretch forward, whatever feels good, just breathe, breathe, breathe. Keep pressing the tailbone towards the feet as if you are trying to nestle your hips between your feet lengthening through the spine, especially the lower spine, and reaching forward with the hands, supporting the chest with the mat or with the block, complete surrender through the lower back. Bring the hands back under the shoulders, inhale, lift up, and keep the block aside. Bringing the legs together, coming onto all fours again. Now I'm gonna go sideways, so it's easier for you to see how we move into the pigeon here. When you're ready, Keeping the toes curled under, straighten the left leg behind you. As you activate the left leg, bring the right knee between your two hands. So here, I'm sitting with my right foot towards the left edge of my mat. Focus on the left hip and gently bring the left hip closer towards the right heel. Here, the positioning of the right foot can be more towards the perineum or more outward so that the shin becomes parallel to the upper edge of the mat or anywhere in between these two positions, wherever you feel you are able to breathe and you're able to maybe hold that position for a few breaths, find that place. We will go ahead and forward, forward and try it. If it doesn't feel right, you feel like this is a lot of pressure for my hips, this is where I am not comfortable. I will invite you to come back, maybe readjust the foot. So the closer you bring the heels, heel towards the perineum, the easier it will become for you. All right, so focus on the left hip, gently press the left hip closer towards the right heel. Now, if you find that your right hip is further away from the ground, and it is not touching the ground, then grab a block and slide that block under your right hip. So support your right side, your right hip with the block if you need to. Pausing here, pressing into the hands, left leg straight on the mat. Inhale, puff the chest up, slight back bend. Really opening the upper body, lengthening through the spine. And as you exhale, as if you're leading with your chest, fold forward. Rest your forehead down on the mat. Or you can rest it on a block. You can choose the height of the block that works for you. And just breathe, breathe, breathe here. Breathe into the right side of your body. Breathe into the hip. Breathe into the right thigh, left leg straight. No pressure on the left knee, no pressure on the right knee. Now this is the moment where you recalibrate your posture. If you feel like that the right foot needs repositioning, if you started out with the right foot forward and you, you need to bring it in towards the perineum, this is the time where you come back up, readjust the foot, and then exhale, fold forward again in your pigeon. Kapotasan, deep breaths here. Press into your hands, curl the left toes under, lift the left knee up and then send the right leg back as well to high plank. Activating the right leg, bring the left knee 
between the hands, straightening the right leg behind you. Pressing into the hands, inhale, lift the chest up, up towards the ceiling. Exhale, leading with the chest, fold forward. Ah, oh, that feels so wonderful for the hips, for the thighs. I did a lot of squats this morning. I was teaching uh, a few classes this morning and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the focus was on the legs and the hips and I ended up doing a lot of squats, a lot of malas, a lot of garland variations. So my, my body needs this right now more than you do. So pause here, or maybe as much as you do. And inhaling, bending through the spine, exhaling, folding forward. Just rest the side of your head if it feels good. Maybe the forehead on the mat. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Again, if you need the blanket under your left hip, then go ahead and grab your blanket or your block and slide that under your hip. And feel that support of the block and feel how you're able to breathe and pause here. If again you need to readjust the left foot and bring it out a little bit, go ahead and do that or bring it in, then you're welcome to do so as well. Just hold for a couple of breaths, making sure we are holding the left side for as long as we held the right side. Deep breaths. Three, two. Press into your hands, curl the right toes under, lift the right knee off, send the left back, drop the knees down. Slide the feet to one side, sit back onto your hips, straighten the legs out, scooch down so you are able to lay down on your mat. I'm going into the sleeping variation of this posture. So when you're ready, keep both the knees bent and feet on the mat. Here, make sure that the neck is long and your chin is pulled in towards your neck. Right foot on the left sorry, right ankle on the left thigh. Shoulders are relaxed. Take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, start to bring the left leg in towards the chest. Now this can come on its own or you can use your arms. Left arm goes through the legs, right hand holds the left shin, sorry, left hand holds the left shin. Gently press that in. And as you gently bring, bring that left shin in towards your body, you'll start to notice that decompression in your lower back. How wonderful it feels for the lower back and the hips. So keep pulling that left shin in. And if left shin, holding the left shin is not a possibility, then hold the left thigh and continue to pull that in. You can hold the left thigh or the left shin with the left hand. And if you feel up to it, then use your right hand and gently pry the right knee away from the body Keep pulling the left knee in and keep prying the left knee away. Deep breaths. If it feels good, straighten the left leg up towards the ceiling. I like to do this by holding the left leg holding the left thigh and just sway from side to side, maybe massaging the lower back muscles, making a number four with the legs here, left leg straight, right leg, right ankle on the left thigh, flatten the lower back on the mat. Make sure you keep the lower back flat and not curl the hips up, keep the tailbone down on the mat. Right, left heel pressing up towards the ceiling, left leg straight here and exhale, bend the left knee, Drop the left foot down and release the right as well. Sway the knees from one side to the other. And let's switch sides. Left ankle on the right thigh. Here, the knee wants to stay closer to the chest. Focus on the knee and gently pry that knee away from the body. Inhale, lift the right foot off the mat. Hold the right thigh or the right shin. And gently pull that in towards the chest. You can choose the right thigh or the right shin, wherever you are able to grab onto. And then use your left hand to gently pry the left knee away. Right knee in towards the chest and left knee away from the chest. Deep breaths.
Straightening the right leg up towards the ceiling, holding the right thigh. Keep pulling that right leg in towards the chest. Straightening the lower back, flattening the lower back on the mat, straightening the right leg so that the right heel presses up towards the ceiling. Use your left elbow and pry the left leg away from the body. Keep breathing here. Three, two, and one. Bend the right knee, rest the right foot down, rest the left foot down, and just again sway the knees from one side to the other. Final part, lifting the feet up, Ananda Balas and the happy baby. Now here we lift the feet up so that the knees are generously bent towards this, the chest. Or rather, I invite you to aim the knees to the outside of the rib cage on either side. Shins are parallel to each other and the soles of the feet are pointing up towards the ceiling. With the first two fingers and the thumb, go from the inside of the big toes, the left and the right, Wrap your fingers and your thumb around your big toe and use that grip to gently pull the knees down towards the outside of your ribcage on either side. Keep the shins parallel, soles of the feet up towards the ceiling, tailbone flat on the mat, belly slightly engaged, shoulders relaxed, elbows relaxed, chin towards the neck and just stay here. If it feels good, you can sway from side to side, flattening the lower back. breaths. Bring the soles of the feet together in butterfly and you may hear a lot of popping here. I hear a lot of popping in my hips, my knees, my ankles, even my toes. So every time I get into my onto my mat and practice happy baby and variations of happy baby, my body is really thanking me. It's really happy. And most of us are like that. We're always on our feet, busy lives, lots to do. And this practice just allows us to press the reset button and just pause and really connect with the body. Let the body, body start to heal itself, restore itself. And we pause to give back to the body, not just take, take, take. Rather use this practice to fill our cup, to replenish ourselves. Butterfly to happy baby, happy baby, to butterfly, and any variation of the butterfly that feels good to you. And exhale, gently release the legs down on the mat. Arms by your sides. And just pause here. All the work is done. Final resting posture, Shavasan. Lay down flat on your mat. Arms by your sides, palms turning up, toes falling on either side. Just breathe into the chest, breathe into the belly. With each inhalation, filling the chest up. With each exhalation, surrendering through the hips. Feel the earth's gravitational pull, attract the body, pull the body down towards the, the center of the earth. As if with the earth's magnetism, you are releasing from your body all that it doesn't feel good to you, all that tiredness, all the aches and pains, all the heaviness of the day. Let that get deep into the earth. Release it from your body and surrender it to the ground. The toes are relaxed. The arches and the heels are relaxed. The shins and the knees are surrendering with each breath. Thighs are heavy, hips are heavy, pulling down towards the mat. Breath is open and expansive, fills up the belly and the chest. The spine feels happy and long. The shoulders are relaxed. The arms are just letting go completely all the way down to the fingertips. The neck is relaxed. The face is at ease. The eyes are heavy. The eyebrows and the forehead relaxed. All the way up to the crown of the head completely at ease.
If your day allows, just stay here in your Shavasana for a few more breaths and come out of it whenever you are ready. If this is, the, this is all the time you've got, then when you're ready, bring your knees in towards the chest. Wrap your arms around your legs and rock from side to side. Press to one side. Pressing into the hands, inhale, lift up to a seated position. Ending the class with three full breaths together. Inhale, lift the arms up overhead, reach up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Inhale, expand. Exhale, release. I bow down to the goodness in you, the universe that dwells in you. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this practice. I know my body enjoyed a lot. Please let me know how you feel about this practice. Leave a comment. Share this practice with someone that you think might benefit from it. While you're here, subscribe to my channel and just talk to me. Let me know what you want me to focus on uh, next. This, this series of hip openers was a request uh, from a dear friend of mine. And, uh, and, and so I'm, I'm looking for new ideas, new things that I would want to be able to work on for you. So let me know. Thank you. Namaste.